Hi, everybody. Um, okay, we're doing good. We're only five minutes late this time. We still having uh, technical difficulties bringing in um, psychic uh, medium, Lonnie Benson, and she's trying to log on right now. And Jackie's going to be a little late too. But here's Andy and me. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. I think we know pretty much what's going on in this uh, when we talk today is going to be about crossing over so talking about um soul rescues and things like that uh Londi has done soul rescues i have andy participated in one and so we kind of really want to talk about our stories and some of the differences between ghosts and spirit and things like that so um it should be a real interesting um show uh jackie's gonna be a little late but you can uh post your questions uh we will be doing readings probably the last 25 minutes i think and um oh i didn't talk to you about this today's sponsor so um matter of fact andy i forgot to tell you i'm um, actually let's we'll start our new sponsor next week and we'll can we do imt okay. today yeah uh, yeah adrian's wonderful uh crystal and um reiki infused teas um uh that are so great he has a variety of uh teas uh one like if you really want to be grounded He's got that one. If you really want to have great dreams, it's called a dreamer. My favorite is I am that I am. To me, that's like an all purpose spiritual experience. Um, I can't remember the other ones that he has. I'm sorry, yeah. but maybe we can yeah. see. I am grounded was one of them. Um, and the three main ones are you listed the two and then the one that I just said. So, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, he's he he really puts a lot of great energy. He's a master Reiki of two different types of Reiki, and he is um, I, he may be shaman in training. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing right now, but he puts that great energy in with the crystal grid, as well as his um, that wonderful Reiki energy that goes into the tea. He uses 100% organic uh ingredients and they're a special blend and you know what they're beautiful i opened a bag up and um and put it out and it's just like you could just have it there as being good energy in the room um as well as go ahead and brew a wonderful cup of tea so um andy do you have his link that we could share that would be wonderful too yeah yep oh great thank you Sorry about that. I forgot to tell you, we do have another spon sponsor, and I'm so excited about that person. But we'll next time will be a real good time to share. And that is that is going to be our party day, isn't it? Are we yeah. only one week away? We are. I'm so excited. Okay. Well, you want to tell everybody what the party's about? So uh, next Friday, June 1st, we are going to do a Facebook Live book party. And this is going to be promoting our new book, The Little Book of Big Evil. And you see Debbie there. She's got she's got the actual um, real book in her hand, the proof copy. So uh, we are going to dress up for this event. We're going to have friends uh, involved with the party. And we're going to have our own desserts. Uh, we're doing a giveaway, too, as well, aren't we? Three giveaways Friday, three gift cards Friday that we'll be giving away. And I'm not going to say what they are. And they're not going to be Starbucks, guys, um, because tonight we're giving out another Starbucks. This was Starbucks month. But we're going to give out special um, special gift cards. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to have, I guess we could say it, we're going to have a trivia contest, you guys. Yeah. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're just celebrating uh, the release of our book. It's going to be for sale uh, first on Amazon and then Kindle. But the fact is, it will be like our other books and it'll be able to get it on Barnes and Noble online and jet.com. I mean, everybody's going to have it. I know that, um, you know, at least one or two of my books are for sale in some, like in Belgium or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, that's interesting. But they'll be sold just about everywhere. And we have a special price on this one. So I'm excited that we can uh, release it uh, with the special price. It is the little book of big evil um, because what the evil is, is that we wrote about the darker entities that are out there. And we went ahead and um, have uh, true stories. These are stories of people that we know, people that have, um, you know, very much a validation in their story and our own stories about what we've come up against. And so they're in here. They're phenomenal. We even have, uh, I'd say, graphic evidence in here of um, contact with, I, I'm going to call like a shadow man. Um, and uh, we've had instances I know for me that I know for a fact that there's been demon contact and that was through electronic communication. So um, it's really interesting story and lots of uh, pictures, isn't there, Andy? Lots of pictures yeah. we have. Oh, here. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. that you can recognize some of the stuff, you know, if you see it sometime. Like, I didn't know what the hag looked like until she formed in front of me. And then the artist rendering in here as of the how I saw her. So it really is uh, going to be great. The party's going to be fun. Some of the people that are going to be in the little boxes with us, their stories are in this book. So I, uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Can't wait. I, I know. I can't wait. Decorating everything. And you might see my new banner. I have the new logo for Psychic Fixes on my banner. And I'll be getting one for the Psychic Life, too. So we are spiffing up the place for you guys. Um, okay, so we might as well go ahead and um, talk a little bit about uh, crossing over. A lot of people are... Uh, I grew up just saying it was a ghost, you know? If there was anything, it was a ghost. Well, we know now um, that there's all kinds of things out there. So we have a, a lot of people, especially in the dead talk, they say ghost or spirit. So is one earthbound or is one a spirit that can go like to heaven and back to earth and walk around, you know, and stuff. Um, also, we have the entities out there, say dark energy type of stuff. So we have a lot of stuff and stuff that I'm sure I don't know about that are, you know, roaming the earth at this point. Um, but we want to talk about crossings. Um, uh, we'll call it earthbound spirits, ghosts over, or someone who just passed away. Um, Andy, you you were with um, the wonderful medium, uh, Brian Bowles, and you had an opportunity to participate in a in a crossing someone over. Can you just give us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I can oh, hear, I can hear, I can hear I can myself. Hear myself. <laughs> okay, I'm, fix your mic. Um, I, think, I think it's coming through your speakers. Is it? Okay. Now, you can hear me just fine, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, great. So, um, my experience with the crossing over, it was kind of... Um, it wasn't planned or anything. And we were in Colorado at the Gold Hill Inn, uh, a very, I want to say a rustic restaurant. And they had like an antique building, um, like an old inn. And it's way up high in the mountains. So if anybody's ever been there or heard of it, uh, it's, it's very fascinating. It's worth the trip. But when we were up there, uh, it's like a three-story building an old inn and there was many spirits and there was also uh i want to say like impressions of the past and not necessarily uh i want to say like active spirits or anything but it was like watching a movie reel in, in your third eye and you could see some of the old western people and um, I, I think it was, you know, there was a few prostitutes there. I remember seeing validated that with another gifted medium there as well. We, we ended up going up to the third floor and this is where we were seeing a little boy spirit and he was playing with a ball. And I said, he's playing, I think it was a red ball. 
a yellow or a red ball. I'm not sure. And he kept rolling it down the the hallway, and everything was really dark in there. And we had taking probably six or seven people on this on this ghost tour, and um, there was a younger gal that was in the group with her mom, and she was seeing this little boy, and she talked to this little boy, and I was seeing him as well. Um, and Brian was seeing him and he, there's some, a very traumatic experience happened because I was being shown a picture of an older stern woman as if he had been locked in this room for punishment. And what happened then was, um, it's like he couldn't leave and he chose not to leave or to cross over when he had passed. So I think there was some a real big traumatic thing that happened to him in his death. Uh, however, um, the the younger gal, the spirit of the little boy was talking to, uh, to the gal that was with us, uh, the younger girl, and um, he felt comfortable with her. He was very standoffish with the adults. Um, he didn't really approach. He just kind of kept rolling this ball, and and uh, she talked to him. And um, I, I'm not sure what she said, but as a group, we all wanted to help cross him over. And um, I don't remember the exact way of doing that. You know, if we brought an angel in or we asked a, a loved one to come through and to bring him through. So it was very fascinating. I've never had that experience with a group of people. How sad that it was a little boy. Yeah. You know, we have a little boy named Andrew in the local cemetery, and he does not want to go over to the other side. He doesn't. He says that he likes to pull pranks and do things and move things in the in the cemetery. And so when we go, we always stop by his grave and say hi to him. Um, and we do ask, you know, for him to cross over or we ask for someone to come and help him cross, but he still doesn't want to go. Uh, we'll be going out, I think, next month, probably. Now all of our active uh, events will start where we're going to cemeteries and we are, um, you know, going to homes and different things like that. And now that, you know, the weather's a little bit better and all of that, um, it can get pretty kind of cold and clammy and foggy even here in san diego at night um very humid in the cemeteries and we have coyotes that uh, get very close to us and you know we're not afraid of the ghosts and everything but we're watching out for those coyotes uh today i was over at um um the dead talks uh medium uh lena and paranormal investigator was over at her home and uh she we had the her little dog was looking at the door and she her ears went up and she just started barking growling and barking mm -hmm. and lena said um to the dog that it's okay you remember the man lives here and we have an understanding and he goes he knows the rules <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. you know in my house I don't, you know, I don't have anybody I don't really know <laughs> in spirit in my house, unless I invite them in, and then I always just make sure they're escorted out. But um, anyway, that was like I was looking, saying, you know, and I didn't happen to see him. The she actually, there's a guy in the elevator of her building, and so um, I was. Now I only tune in and see the people when I want to. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm so lucky that way. But um, I was in this um, uh, spirit circle when they brought this guy up. And I said, there's a guy in the elevator. I said, let me, I'll be right back. But don't discuss anything. And I went out and went into the elevator, rode the elevator. The guy was in the elevator. Um, I saw exactly how old he is, what he looked like, everything about him. Little hunched over, his features, everything. But he um, didn't like um, two of the um, the floors. He wouldn't get off. There was only one floor he wanted to be on. It was interesting. So I think he belonged to that floor. And I came back and I sat down. I said, okay, this is what he looks like. 
and this is what he's wearing and everything. And they go, especially Janine, the uh, medium, she goes, you're right. It's exactly what he looks like. So he's earthbound. So when people cross, uh, when they die, and either they're confused, they don't know where they're at, or there's a reason they want to stay. They may stay because a loved one, they feel like they want to stay close to a loved one and that they'll stay there with them. Um, or it's a traumatic thing. Like uh, Andy was talking about with the little boy, it can be super traumatic experience and um, or they're scared or something like that. So we have the earthbound spirits. So we want to, my take on all of this, a good and evil, is that if you guys just look at the news, you see all the horrible things happening in the world. I mean, I I feel like maybe they were just underreported when I was young, but I feel like there's more and more and more evil out there. And so um, I feel like we need to get more people over to heaven. You know, we need to get them to the other side in the good place. And um, so it really is great to not only have those people go over, but to to let their souls finally kind of be at rest and, and get crossed over to the other side. Um, if it's taking care of their traumatic experience, when we go out to cemeteries and stuff and we go through these um, these uh, stories of these entities that uh, or uh, ghosts that have had horrible things happen, then we need to talk it out with them. And so one time I went out and there was a lot of mediums there and there was an empath and a medium there. And she, she felt a lot of feelings. So it's very hard to, I, I'm glad I'm not an empath. That's when you take on the feelings and yeah, you have yeah. all the emotions. I think Andy, you are, have that. And uh, so she, we had a really angry spirit and it actually, the people saw it push this lady and she almost fell. And the reason it, targeted her because she was using a cane because it was uneven uh, territory there where you're walking over the graves. And so that was to keep her stable. And she's because she's a little bit older, but it picked her and it pushed her. And so this empath decided that she was going to take on this guy as far as getting him cross over to the other side. Well, that never happened. Um, that entity was so angry and the other mediums can see what was going on. And this poor lady, the, the empath, she ended up uh, crying and just groaning and, oh my gosh, it was sad. And she took on all that emotion that, and all that terrible experience that that guy had. And so when you're doing that, it's hard to separate and say, okay, let's get you crossed over to talk to them like that. And so we ended up trying to bring in ancestors, uh, family members that are in spirit, uh, angels to help him, but it never happened. So when I go to that particular cemetery where we always have to be careful that that guy is probably still there. Um, so what we try to do when we go out and do a soul rescue is to really uh, connect to the entity and then really talk to them and to um, uh, to try to reason with them or find out the reason that they're still there and see if we can't talk them into wanting to go to heaven. And then we don't do this. A lot of people do this and this is fine. Whatever people's belief is, I'm fine with it. But we don't say there's a door and there's a light around it or anything like that. Go to the door, open it, go through it. We don't say there's a portal, go through it. We don't say there's a tunnel with a light, go to the light. We don't do any of that because in the dimensional worlds type of thing, we don't know where they're going. And there is evil out there. We know that. We wrote a book on it. So we want to make sure that someone that is on the other side, be it an, uh, an angel, archangel, or the loved one, or whatever, and we can see them come. 
and they're the ones that will take them and they'll take them to the right place. So that's kind of our take in the dead talk, how we do it. So we will uh, bring in some people from the other side or even angel, somebody that can talk to this person and tell them it's okay and let's go to the light. And so it's a really incredible experience when you are there and especially if you can see if you can see the, that happening and then they go and it's just really a great feeling and the energy is really high, but there's just probably as many of the, of the uh, ghosts that ended up staying. And it's just, it's really heartbreaking that they're still there, but we keep trying. And uh, then you go to places like Andy, you can imagine this when we go to a real haunted place and we would like to do soul rescues. We talk to the people, but the people that own the property and stuff, they don't want that. They want to keep the ghosts because they're profiting from these ghosts. You know, it's bringing yeah. people to come look yeah. at the haunted place. And so that's kind of sad too. And especially if you encounter children. When we went to the theater, we're trying still to get Londi Benson on. I don't know if you're messaging her, Andy, but um you know it and you may go to facebook and maybe put some kind of a thing up because i'm not seeing um i'm not seeing like a an audience here so um i don't know if we're still having technical difficulties i'd love to get londy in too yeah she she just mentioned that it won't acknowledge her even though she's signed in Okay. Yeah, and it won't even allow her to see us. Um, okay. I mean, maybe she could go to. She could go to uh, Psychic Fix's fan page and look. She's got great stories, and I really wanted her to come in. Um, oh, I'm not sure what's going on. Here she is. That's Yay. So, yeah, that's so. That's awesome. Here she is. Okay, um, we're gonna say hi to Londy. Okay. She should appear any minute in a um, a window. So I do want to talk about portals, though, because you've got to be careful with those things. And here she is. Hi, hey, there you are. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I you would not know what I've been through for the. Oh, you know, but you know me well enough to know that that's just the way things go with me. So I thought they didn't want me here tonight is what I thought. Oh, um, come on. So, <laughs> uh, um, I'm just typing a little message there to you, Andy. Okay. So um, anyway, we, Londi, we were talking about uh, doing soul rescues and, um, and, I know for some of the people in the dead talk, they don't, uh, they're worried about the people, um, you know, saying go to a door, open the door, and maybe it's a portal to somewhere else and not heaven. So yeah. it's kind of saying what we do sometimes is we ask for the ancestors or the family members or the angels to come in and escort them. True. So uh, uh, have you done a soul rescue before? No. No, 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 no. Are you going to? I don't think so. No. I, I, I think it's just out of my realm, you know. I, I, I sometimes you just gotta know your limitations. It hasn't come up in anything that I've done for the last however many years I am old. So it's like if it's gonna start now, I think it better get going. <laughs> well, um I just don't I know feel that comfortable. We're going to be doing some at the cemetery, but. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you yeah. know what? I take it back because I have been with you whenever you've done Soul Rescue. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So that I haven't done them myself other than be with you and, and be support staff. So I take that back. I have been at least something. So. We never know when we're out in the cemetery if we're going to really get somebody that needs to, uh, you know, be crossed over or not. Right, right. And sometimes it just gets into these deep stories. I mean, sometimes I go, the stories are so crazy, you go, or, or so tragic and everything. They'd be great movies, you know. Oh, yeah. So you just wonder what the heck is um, going on. 
Um, Andy, do you see the messages that I'm giving you? No. I do. Okay. Oh. We go into. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Are we still, um, maybe you can look into that. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, so we were talking about the difference between a ghost. When I grew up, it was always just a ghost. We didn't even use the term spirit. And when I got into the dead talk, they're talking about, okay, there's a ghost, which would be an earthbound right. spirit. Right. And then a spirit which has transcended um, to the other side and comes and visit it, visits. So um, is it? do you know if it's... Uh, have you like uh, bumped into both of those? Like somebody's spirit I or someone? I have bumped into some. Well, it was, I, I've told you the story, and it's it's the most hilarious thing that's ever, the most realistic of everything that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Okay, I did a big um, paranormal investigation up at Temecula. And it was awesome, really, really fun. And right after that, about two or three months later, I went back to my home state and uh, was visiting and just happened to have time during the day. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to my old beauty shop and I'm going to go get my hair done by the girl who usually did me back then for like 11 years or whatever. And so um, I took it on faith. I, I, it was just one of those last minute, you ought to go over, you ought to go over, you ought to go over. I'm like, okay. So I did. And it was right across from where we were at, as far as where our hotel was. So I get in there and she's not there, which confused me because I really thought that I was going to see her. And I was, I was just a little taken back by it. So this girl was in there and she's like, okay, um, I'll just go ahead and start taking care of you. She's like, she might drop in. I don't know. She, had, She's in and out. She's the manager, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I know. It's been a while since I've seen her, but great. So anyway, I, we're waiting there for for a while. And then all of a sudden she walks in and she says, this is the weirdest thing. She's like, I can't believe I'm seeing you. And I said, why is that? She's like, I was off to do something else. And all of a sudden I, I got, this, got this urge to come back to the beauty shop. And I went, really? And I, I said, that's cool. I don't think I told you this part of it before because I'm getting to the other part. You always tell me to talk longer. So I'm talking longer. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, the girl starts finishing my hair. And we're sitting there talking and I'm telling her about the Temecula thing because it's just, it, it's a fascinating story that we'll get into sometime on its own because there's audio, video, all kinds of evidence for this thing that we went to up there. But uh, I'm sitting there and she kind of turns me around towards the back of the store or shop, you know, and I, I look up and this woman walks out of a, of a, a room and she's mixing up um, color dye like they always do, you know, and I, I was used to seeing it there. I mean, I'd been there for like 11 years. So, but I didn't know this woman. I was like, oh, she must've caught him here after I had left or whatever. So she's like mixing up the stuff and she looks right at me. I'm looking right at her and I'm smiling, you know, kind of acknowledging her. And, uh, I, um, she flipped me around again, was talking to me and, and we were still doing stuff. I, I didn't think anything more about it. She fly, finally turns me around one more time to do, you know, refinish the back of the hair. And out comes this woman again. She has her hair about my color, flipped up on the ends, very, very skinny. And she's wearing a tan um, apron over uh, some kind of a top. And, and actually, was it like a, a long dress kind of thing? And um, I was like, being quiet. I kept getting quieter and quieter because I started thinking if she's got somebody working over on the other side, not everybody is into paranormal stuff and they don't want to be hearing me tell stories about Temecula. Obviously I can get excited and loud whenever I talk. And so I was trying to calm myself down. So I kept going, okay. And so then, and then finally she goes to me, she's like, why are you whispering? I said, cause I didn't want to bother the people over on the other side. She's like, what people? I said, well, um, the person who's getting your hair colored over on the other side. And she said, there's nobody else in here except for you and the woman that was doing your hair before me. And I said, say what? And she's like, no, really? She's like, we're the only people in here, just the three of us. And I said, okay, there's just something different here. 
the woman was as three dimensional as anything. I, I mean, it would have been just like sitting here looking at you people. It was just, uh, there was nothing ghostly about it, nothing at all. And so finally, um, she says to me, she's like, what does she look like? And I said, well, you know, really skinny and blonde hair flip on it. Oh, and she had black horn rimmed glasses on. And uh, I said, she had on this uh, uh, brown apron. And I kind of looked up in the mirror and I'm seeing her eyes get like this and her mouth go like this. And I'm like, what the, why, what's the matter? She's like, that's the person I bought the store from. I said, really? She's like, you completely down to the, the horn room glasses, completely explained what she looked like. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, she died from breast cancer <laughs> right after I bought this shop from her. And I went, are you freaking kidding me? Because it's the first time I had ever seen a real, I mean, I've seen black mass stuff and I've seen, um, you know, like white shimmery kind of stuff. And I've seen um, outlines of things and that kind of stuff. But as far as something that looks like me, only skinny walking across the thing and doing here at the same time, I don't know if she's doing here in paradise or what, but it was definitely the most experience, most interesting experience I'd ever had as a psychic because I was not expecting an in my own uh, beauty shop. <laughs> so there is my story about having, but as far as the other side, I, I as far as the other kind of ghost, um, I have had an experience with that as well. Um, and it was from the Temecula <laughs> thing that happened. But we had visited the Temecula site. And am I getting too long? Because if, if you need me to shut up, I will. Just, hey, just go, Blondie, shut up, and I'll do it. Anyway, the Temecula site was really fascinating because um, um, there were it was an, an old um, Native American uh, reservation that we went to and there was a double wide trailer that was sitting on it and these people had had a I should say modular home it wasn't a double wide it was actually a modular home it's much bigger than a double wide <laughs> uh, my phraseology is all off anyway so um native americans and I, and I had the pleasure of the company of, of some native american who decided to ride with me from um san diego up to temecula and talked to me the entire way. <laughs> I did not see him and probably looked very strange as I was going like this all the time over to the you know passenger seat because it's like I could hear him just fine. I just could not see him at all, which was an, uh, an experience in itself because I had never had that experience, not to that extent. But he was telling me all kinds of things about what it was like there and all. But when we were in the backyard, one of the things he said to me was, um, he's like, you know, um, they stole the, this land from us. And I went, well, I wasn't surprised, but I, I just was kind of like with the rest of the conversation that he and I were having, it just didn't exactly gel exactly the same. And so I was like, who was that? There's a ghost. Mask? It was a black mask. <laughs> 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 or gray one. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, he, he said they stole the land from us. And I, and at the same time, I, I turned to the guy and I said, they did a lot of mining just really close to here, didn't they? And he said, well, as a matter of fact, yes, they did. And I said, so this was a, a miner's encampment at one time. And, and the guy said, well, from everything that I've kind of researched, yes, indeed, it has been a miner's encampment. And I was like, okay. So anyway, let's fast forward two weeks, okay? Because after having that conversation with him, that was that was enough for me to tell you what happens next. So anyway, the very next morning... As a matter of fact, I get woken up out of a dead sleep by a harmonica going. And, you know, when you've heard a harmonica, you do not mistake what a harmonica sounds like. And it was right next to my ear. And I thought I thought one of my kids, although they live in L.A., I thought maybe they'd come down and surprise me or something. Or my husband was going, oh, this is going to be really fun. There wasn't a harmonica in the house. OK, Um and I thought it was kind of funny. And I thought, oh, and at the same time, I went, oh, crap, somebody has followed me home, which can happen. Of course, we, we, all, we all know that. And I had not really gone into a big you stay here thing like I usually do. Um, so, so I was feeling very guilty because I'm like, oh, crap, Larry's going to be so angry for me to bring, <laughs> bring home uninvited guests like this. And um, so anyway, two weeks go past. 
And we go to the um, reveal to these people who had had us in to do um, this investigation. And we're sitting around this table and somebody just keeps pinching at me, pinching at me, pinching at me. And during this conversation, they're talking about, you know, they're telling us all the different stuff. And they said, well, has anything unusual? I said, well, right now, I said, somebody has just try- kept, keeps pinching me. And so one of the guys, he starts doing a, an exorcism over the top of me, basically. You know, it's like, you just leave her alone kind of thing and gets really mad and nasty and kind of, you know, it was, I was kind of almost giggling because I thought it was so funny that he got so angry. And I'm like, he's just pestering me, you know, it's not a big deal. But um, I said, well, as a matter of fact, I said, the morning after I was at this thing in Temecula, I said, I got woke up by harmonica. I said, it was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. I said, I never had anybody play one in my ear before like that. And the woman across from me went white. And I was like, what the heck? And she's like, you have to show her. And I'm like, so her husband gets up, walks to the other room and comes back holding a harmonica. He said, I never owned this until the day after we were at, we had you guys over he said and suddenly i had this i had to go buy a harmonica he said i don't know why but he said i had to buy this harmonica and so that was my spiritual i guess you have to call it and even like two and three at a time i guess but he he did go ahead and leave i finally talked him into it he he left but uh, it was it was really an experience Look, to tell you. Did he leave or did he cross over, do you think? I don't know for sure because I, I actually did. Okay. If I think about it, I guess I, I do it and I don't really think about it as being, um, okay, I want you to go to the light kind of thing. I'm going, you know, there's a lot of better places for you than this. And I've read about them all in the Bible. If you If you believed in the Bible at all, you know, just... You know, follow your heart, go where, where it is that you need to be going, or somebody will be picking you up soon, I'm sure. But please don't stay in my house. You ought to at least, I, and I always wonder, I'm like, so did he hitchhike back or do they just kind of teleport back to where they were, <laughs> where they were to begin with? Or are they actually just kind of hanging around here? So I don't know. But uh, I actually did tell him to to please go to a better place, but I, I didn't do any kind of a ceremony or anything. I just, it was just me oh, going, no. Hey, you know what? That's what you ought to do. So. Oh yeah. You, there's, there really shouldn't be a ritual or anything like that. Yeah. I imagine there are some people that do that, but there's also not a ghost Greyhound bus that comes by either. <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> oh, I watched that movie. It's very good. Heart and souls <laughs> with Robert oh, Downey yeah. Jr. My, my favorite movie. So <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's a big bus that comes and picks them all up so there you go <laughs> oh well i always wanted to ride in that bus in harry potter <laughs> <laughs> well there is that too i guess or riding the train i've been on a train it's kind of like being in in uh, hogsworth <laughs> whatever it's called it's really That's bizarre me. yeah it's, it's amazing um, i think that too with some of the people um not only the people that had tragedy or something really uh horrible happened in their lives that keeps them there there's also that aspect of maybe the native americans that of which i am a proud one though i don't look at it my family i just went to the the indian you know burial ground cleanup and they're like uh, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> i have a dna hey, test, white girl so <laughs> What up? (laughs) You don't fit in exactly, no. (laughs) I did not. Uh, They all looked at me. I was truly the odd man out there. Um, But uh, you have the people that are there because of a strong connection to the land. Hey, Jackie. Hi. They have a strong connection to the land or reason to be there. Maybe maybe they're waiting for um, some kind of resolution or something to happen because um or staying in force and not ready to cross over i've always read that really it's like do you want to stay there with your loved ones or for this for whatever really good reason that you have or is it better to cross over well everything i've read if you cross over you're more effective and you can work 
uh, with whatever is going on in this realm from there. And so you know, people, uh, I, think, well, I think just don't want to go. I think that they're perfectly happy just watching what happens next. You know, it's like, okay, I'm gone. Now what, what, what goes on once you're gone? It's, it's like some of them get like an, almost an amnesia that they're supposed to move on. Maybe even, you know, it's like oh, yeah. uh, that they just kind of hang in the place where they're, where they're planted. And uh, sometimes it's the house that they grew up in. I think, and you know, you've, you've heard it before where somebody's moved away a long ways away. And then that house that they grew up in becomes haunted and the people go, I don't know. And then um, somebody comes in and they go, well, you know, so-and-so uh, used to live here 1822, you know, or something like that. And they don't want to leave. And it's like, okay, so what do you do after that? You know, you just, you invite them to move on and that's about all you can do. Well, I really feel like uh, you you had it, the nail on the head type of thing there. Um, we don't have to do much more than to point out there's a better place. And if we can connect to, uh, so anybody could do that as long as they're, you know, um, you know, if they don't see them or anything, but they think there's something there, yeah. you could say, go, you know, you know, there's a better place to go find and to be and to dwell, but they can always say, be in the spiritual and say God or Jesus or, right. or whoever, exactly. uh, come angels, come and take them or the ancestors come and take them and cross them over. Um, so it doesn't have to be a big profound, you know, thing. I think some people probably do that, but um, in our group, we do talk the, through it. We talk through and get the whole story and maybe in one instance, we had uh, a couple and one one passed away and um, hung out for the other one. And the other one passed away, but they didn't quite, they were still hanging around for it. Yeah, it's so, like one of them on one plane and one on another and just kind of going like this or something is the way that I always uh, picture it. You can go now because they're on the yeah. other side. Really interesting stories. But sometimes when they've had something tragic or they're very mad because they can be extremely mad when they when that happens. And then all the little things like Andy and I wrote in the book, the, the scrabblies, the dark energy, the gumbies, we call them. They like that. So they'll be around yeah. it and it just gets bigger. And so that's when it can be a little dangerous or, it, you know, like the pushing and all of that, especially yeah. if they have the dark energy along with them. That's when you go and you get the scratches and the bites and um, the pushing and things like that. So or you don't want any of that to go home with you. So right. I really feel like I really feel like if somebody needs to be crossed, it's good to get somebody who's done it before. And mm -hmm. especially a medium that can communicate with the person that dis is deceased and can talk through it and ask the other side to come and get them. Again, I'm really wary about anybody opening a portal. You know, this is how it works when people do rituals and stuff like that. They will, or Ouija board or whatever. And my sister and my niece will don't agree with me with that. They use the Ouija board all the time. But when we say, when we invite things in, they here we can create a portal. Or if we say, you know, there's, you know, it's like a choose your own adventure type of book when the people go through and they say, walk down the path, there's the light, there's the door, open the door and go. I'm like, where do you think that's going? Do you really think that's going to heaven? Are you really sure? I want an archangel or somebody, an ancestor yeah, no coming kidding. from heaven and taking them. I want to stop, uh, you know, a cop or something going, okay, this way, this way, you know, just keep moving along, move along <laughs> something to where you don't feel like you're oh. on your own, you know, and yeah. it's crazy. I had, uh, I had an instance with uh, a client um, where I connected to this person. Um, she had mentioned about a husband Um that was, you know, wouldn't cross over. And, and the history behind their relationship wasn't that great. Um, and when I tuned in, I could see him <clears throat> getting in my face, pointing his finger, leave my wife alone. And um, I didn't, 
I did not acknowledge him. I saw him, but I didn't acknowledge him. And uh, I said, you're standing in your kitchen. And he's right behind you and he's pointing. Um, and she wanted to get rid of him. But I'm, I want to be more experienced before I do any of that. So, you know, at some point work with, with you, Debbie and, or Londi or, you know, whoever yeah. uh, that that's done this before, because I don't, for me, I don't, um, at this certain point, I don't feel comfortable just demanding or, you know, yeah. I, I need, I need that. You know training. what? I think one of the things that I, I have discovered over the years and, and much to my chagrin, sometimes see it on TV is whenever they, people feel like they have to bully a ghost to get them to do something. I'm like, <gasps> provoke them that just it just sends me right up the wall i'm like okay how would you like it right now if i came over in your face and said you had to do this or you had to do that and trust me i can be imposing in my five foot three height you know i'm just but when you've got somebody who's going um uh just show me how you, you know come over here just hit me or something i'm like you're asking for trouble by just even doing something like that and you're causing a situation that might not have even been there before by doing and saying that kind of thing. So I'm, I hate provocation. I just, yeah. I just, well, you know. remember when we were at the four story theater. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was one of the days and I was in the red room. The red room is really cool. <laughs> they, they painted it red. They have bloody, yeah, bloody handprints on everything. Pictures of um, uh, what is Jack Nicholson's movie? Oh, Shining and Shining. Some of that stuff. Yeah, The Shining. Red, Rum. Red, Rum. Red Room. Yes, and and that's where I do uh, readings. And so anyway, um, we were investigating, and I went down to the kitchen where Chad's has a ghost named David in there, and. They've had a lot of trouble in there. And um, I mean, I went right in. I could feel him. So I went in and I heard a lot of commotion. And as I walked in, they were provoking him uh. um, because the day before um, Michael, Michael got like pushed or it went into him or something. I remember. And I remember. So then I walked in there and um, I said, no, you do not do that in in you know we i don't allow that and all of a sudden everybody you know there were everybody was very young they had their phones <laughs> they all went off red and they were scream the phones were screaming, screaming. All of them <laughs> everybody it was screaming and everybody it was goes, off in the kitchen do you have any proof though do you have any proof that that <laughs> happened <laughs> and, oh, and, no, and no. i said See, see, I said, he is a strong guy. He yeah. can go in to you. He can push you. You don't want this. And so we, I got them all out. And I said, in mm -hmm. this building, if you, you know, they were roaming around and they were supposed to, you know, be watched. And I said, you can, we do not allow that because it's disrespectful. Yeah. And Definitely. I didn't care for that at all. Yeah. So to sum and this up, guys. Yeah, I just gonna <laughs> to say we wanted up. to go back there someday, and and we didn't want to have to face an angry guy that says, "I remember you guys." You know, that's just not <laughs> what I want to have happen. Um, okay, um, guys, we're um, I want to wrap it up, and if anybody has a question, so we have time to do maybe just a few a few readings, and then we'll, uh, Jackie will do the sweepstakes at the end or the little giveaway but um to wrap it up um we do have uh spirits or ghosts uh, that are here with us the spirits are already on the other side so they're like somebody peacefully passed they want to come back and see the family or whatever um or to get a message through one of us to them and we also have um the ghosts and so they're the ones that might move things or give you a little problems here or there, or just be watching. And um, we do want to get them crossed over. So good gets more people on the other side, or we want to have them not be in heartache or any of that. And we right. want to take them on the other side and let them be healed. So um, 
that's what we wanted to talk about tonight is kind of give you a little bit of take a little bit of what we've seen um when we've gone places and we have crossed them over or experienced an earthbound or spirit now um i know that londy annie and i see spirits a lot and talk to them and they come when summoned especially when i have some of their family there and they're asking you know what's happening um i think the the probably one of the times that I had a grandmother come is I was asked to step in and do a reading for uh, three people. And um, the day before the grandmother came to see me, but she also suspended um, a diamond ring in the air. And I thought, oh, so there's an issue there. Well, she came just to validate who she was. She came so I could see her and I could describe her and also her fashion sense, I have to say, and also about the ring. And that was totally validated. Then I went on to give all of them readings so that they knew what she wanted to say to them and also what was going to happen in their future. So they do come over to facilitate that because they want to know. Uh, they want to know what grandma has to say uh, or mostly don't they always ask, are they okay? And when they have crossed over, they're fine. They're good people. They're great. But um, if you ever have to have someone that you think needs to be crossed, go and find someone who is um, uh, available and um, knows what they're doing so nobody gets hurt. Because mm -hmm. they're... Things can happen, okay? I um, so we want to good safety tip. <laughs> yeah. I, it looks like we finally got a question. Sorry, I came oh, in so awesome. so late. I got. There was um, an can accident. you go ahead and just? Can you just go ahead and send it to um, into the group so we could see it first before we talk about it? Let's see. And we're also going to be doing that contest for um, that. Can you guys see? Is that a Starbucks? It's a Starbucks. I see Starbucks. Yeah. Three gift cards next Friday, guys. Three. Whoa. And not Starbucks. Well, you know, it's the party. I've got to go get silver and blue balloons and black <laughs> balloons behind me. And oh, I love up. to decorate. Yeah, well, it's going to be fun. And dress up and all that will be great. So, um, Andy, did you get to look at the uh, read? Yeah, he yeah. posted them in the okay. group chat. I think that what we kind of decided, Jackie, is that some of the questions we need to look at before we decide that we're going to do them or not. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm um, reading and you're like, yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know my and my and Andy's face is all covered in text. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't he look nice? Mine isn't that way, but uh, Blondie is. Is that Andy? Is that one that you that we want to do? Yeah, and then we have one for uh, Mariah Lance. She's actually a a high school uh, graduate uh, that I graduated with, a classmate. Oh, nice. So she, oh, nice. um, I'd like Blondie to take. Um, that one, if you wouldn't mind. For Mariah? Yeah, I, think, I think we want to... Um, Do that you know, first one? I want to make sure I help everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. What's that question? So, the first one is, um, Pam wants to know if her son, Michael, will have any changes in his life. <laughs> That's okay. why I was giggling. I'm no. sorry. Yeah, I <laughs> figured let's that. Do that first. Uh, let's do that first. First one who has something they can talk. Beginning in August, this uh, guy might as well just uh, chalk his life up to what's going to happen next. It's it's like, I, it's like a snowball rolling downhill is what I'm seeing. And I mean, it more than what he's going to want, but all of them very, very positive. The first couple of things he's going to go, I was afraid that was going to happen. Trust me, it's the best thing that could happen for him. Okay. Don't let him be worried about it because you have to make these first changes in order to get to the next ones, if that makes any sense to you. Now, I always, and to give you a little preface here on how I work, I basically talk. And then it's like, all of a sudden it's like, well, don't you remember? Because 
it's to me have my um, ability is almost like having a memory of something or that someone is kind of like whispering in my if you want to call it whispering in my ear I don't really hear a voice but it's kind of like uh, it's like a memory thought kind of thing but in in Michael's case people coming in and out of his life is the biggest thing that he's dealing with right now it seems to be Mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay tell him please not to worry if that covers what your question's about please let me know um, because I think there's a little bit more that I could probably tell you but I think think I want to have verification before I go into anything further. What I have, what I have for him is that um, I do have some kind of strong connections to something in the past or memories in the past. I also feel like he's going to have a challenge. Like it's hard for him to go forward, Mm -hmm. but he better not go backwards type of thing. Exactly. Um, I do get him though. I'm going to say in, in the future, working, working well with other people. Okay. Um, I feel like something's going to happen there. I think that it's waiting for some results, really. But I think things are going to be a struggle. I do feel like that. um, I do feel like there's going to be leaving something behind. Like I'm done. I'm severing ties with it. I'm finished with something that should be done with. That's kind of what I'm talking about. The two things that may be coming up that he's like, I... But it's the best thing that could possibly happen. It's going to look at it and go, I don't know about this. And then, it, trust me, it's the best thing. And, I mean, totally verifying what, what Debbie had to say in, is um, um, it's one of the things that she mentioned that I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm like, brain dead all of a sudden. <laughs> happens from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of challenge for this kind of a show, isn't it? You know, you get a brain dead. I mean, you know. Sorry. Well, he has a challenge mm-hmm. waiting for results. Um, uh, you said he was going to be working. Time. Yes, he's going to be working great right with. People. Yeah. Yes. Well, the, what I was going to add to that is because he's going to be able to have a job where he's going to. He may have already been a supervisor supervisory type of position. However, I do see that that's going to be something that will be coming up for him at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. It -hmm. feels like he will be in another supervisory position and that, yeah, he gets along very well with people and that's why he rises. He will be rising quickly within the next company that he's going to be in. And it's like amazing because everybody's having such trouble finding good positions right now, but there's something about what he does that every it's like it's just going to click, 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 and and it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. I hope that's what you wanted to know. And I hope it happens. <laughs> I want to say a disclaimer: this is entertainment only. You know. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, I I got a little mix of both of you um, with what I came up with. He is definitely working hard for what he wants. So I, I get the hard work card. Um, I also, if, if he wants to make the changes and uh, actually settle for, you know, like Lonnie said, the two things as well, um, I, I got the chariot. So that's moving forward. He's going to have to push forward for what he wants. Um, and he also finds some balance in his personal life and what he's doing with work. He should also... Um, take action so however fear is holding him back a little bit of anxiety there uh so the the unknown i get the moon card for that um but he should continue to uh get education or seek out more knowledge in what it is that he's passionate about not necessarily uh you know because that's going to bring him the most happiness and then the final outcome is it's a spiritual lesson for him i get the hanged man so he's uh, w- what he's going through is actually going to help um, him realize what it is that he he truly needs for a soul, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I I do feel like he's going to be struggling for a while. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you can manifest for him if you don't know how to manifest. Private message us. Um. You can manifest for anybody, guys. Yep. I know he's going to go. If it's a spiritual lesson, he has to go through it, but we can still make things easier. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and what was the other question? Let's get that one. Um, I oh, don't. Any, what's the, yeah. Anybody watching? Mariah? Mariah? That one? 
Yeah, I I don't think she's watching at the moment. Oh, um, okay. well, maybe she, she might. She might. She well, might she be. might come back and watch it. So let's do okay. it. Um, I have. So the question is, yeah, I was gonna say I have is one. Is if she is anybody watching over her? Yeah. Right. Did you? Of course, she does. You know, spirit guides, but let's go she to something specific. specific. And, and um, um, I actually get an older couple that she knew uh, oh. when she was little that seemed to be, uh, Jackie, did you get the same thing? Because it's like, all of a sudden I was like, Jackie got it because I got goosebumps just looking at you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love when it happens. Anyway, um, it's, it's like... Um, I get that she was closer to the woman, but the guy absolutely adored her. I don't think they were related. I think that they lived close by or somebody from church, something like that. It's not anybody that I can really, I wish I could come up with, with a, a name. Before we got started, I, I kept up coming up with John, but I don't think that's it. Um, so if somebody's got something about John, let me know, because that's like what keeps coming up for me. Um but yeah, I definitely man and woman and um, been with her actually many times, many, many, many times, seen her through some stuff that she didn't think she was going to be able to get through. And the woman especially, I mean, it's just almost like she can feel like loving arms putting her around. And that's, that's this woman. She's terrific. So, yeah. Andy, yeah. did you get anything? I, I know her, but the impression, uh, the, the spirit that I'm getting is her grandmother. Um, and um, I, I know probably I have a, just a loving sense um, surrounding her through what, what she's going through. Londa, you're spot on with that. And so I don't want to say too much <laughs> because I know her. Yeah, um, that's but, hard when you know her. Yeah. yeah. It, well, even so, when you have friends around, you can always say, oh, you, oh I get that your grandmother's here around you. Yeah. Um, I'm getting about the home and things happening in the home. So <laughs> uh, this is always about, I feel like somebody's being a little bit uh, having fun. They as like far to move it, move it. They like to move it from one room to the other. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting like something's going on and things are happening. Uh, yet I feel uh, really good about everything. I don't know if there's a celebration coming up or something, but I feel like um, that person's going to be there for that as well. I feel like the person wanders out and is there when maybe she's doing something or working or anything. So I feel like, yeah, there's some um, uh, stuff going on and I feel like it's fine. I feel, uh, I want to say for her, I'm getting like, um, like um, getting along with someone, maybe even a partnership. I feel like um, she's healing, like a healing um, uh, energy going in the right direction. But I want to say we've got, got a healing for her. Um, she needs to manifest for the finances and the money to come in a little bit better. I want to tell her specifically to make sure that she never jumps to conclusions or at anything or commits to anything without uh, really uh, investigating it, researching it. She needs to take time in her entire lifetime. I want her to do this, to be calm about decisions, but give herself time to think it over before she commits to anything, okay? I'm just getting in the past too much jumping at things or coming to conclusions or uh, being impulsive. But this needs to be calm, and it just works well for her uh, to do that from now on, okay? So I've got to throw that in. So... Um, so I feel like you guys really feel like it's grandma. So that's good. And no. got to be a comfort for her. <laughs> no, it would have been too easy for me to say, oh, it's your grandmother watching. It, it, but it didn't feel like her grandmother. It actually feels like oh, somebody completely separate. Andy's Andy that grandma, right? Yeah. Grandma from Andy. Me, no. As some, it, it, to me, it's somebody that she, uh, that is a really close friend of the family that passed again. Oh, and they actually it. passed within like two or three years of each other. I mean, very, very close. So. And I'd really love a verification on that because there's a little bit more to tell you about that too. And I'd like to know Pam, oh, wow. 
we hit anything close to what you were thinking we were going to. So um, I don't know if she's watching anymore. Um, okay. I personally know Pam. That's actually one of my aunts. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Um, but you're literally right on the money with Michael. <laughs> That's awesome. I love hearing it. I mean, it's just funny to me. I It, it always just amazes me. So it's just fun. I love it. <laughs> okay. Do we have viewers so that we can give away a card? Yeah, we have 11 people watching. Hi, people. Okay, I Jackie, I you want to go ahead and start the contest? Yeah. So um, Blondie, Blondie. Londi, if you can uh, think of a number between 1 and 100 and write it down. Do you have a pen and paper? Yes. All right. And then, Jackie, go ahead and tell our viewers what they need to do. So, guys, just make sure you put down your numbers in the comments. So, it could be from 1 to 100, just like Aunt Debbie said. It could be 1. Lonnie could be picking 1. She could pick 100. She could pick any number she wants. You don't so. know me well enough to know that I'm weird like that. <laughs> But I didn't do that. <laughs> Don't give any hints. No hints. <laughs> no hints. No hints. Write right your numbers in. Yeah, put your numbers down, and you'll get what a five dollar gift card for Starbucks. Yay! That's what we're giving away we today. Don't usually tell them how much. <laughs> oh, I forgot. How, oh, my bad. I'm like my okay, brain's all over the place. <laughs> I have a card. I have this. I'm ready to uh, the winner to. PM me their address and I'll be mailing the card out tomorrow. So put your numbers in, you guys. One to one through one hundred. So far, I only have one win. Let's see. Come on, Let's you guys. See. Come on. I'm I'm wait, waiting for numbers down. So far, I only have one person that put down a number. Okay. There we go. Now two people. Are we gonna get everybody a third person? wants? It. Listen, you can get a nice tea. You can get your breakfast sandwich. You know all kinds of stuff. So hot chocolate for me. I actually, um, uh, I take a coffee mocha, white mocha, white um, chocolate mocha. You betcha. <laughs> Grande. Yeah. Let's see. We got some I'm numbers. Already. Yeah, we got numbers down now. Anybody else have a number down? Come on. I want to <laughs> log in and play. <laughs> you're going to, hey. You're Why don't we just guess numbers, Debbie? That'll be, that's always fun. We okay. should all what individually pick a number. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm good at? I'm good at the uh, ones where it's like how many jelly beans are in the jar. <laughs> that's what I was good at, too. You yeah. don't know how many times I've been absolutely right. And I'm like, why is that? Where'd that come and from? And everybody goes, did you Any take these and count them one at a time or what? Yeah. Anybody else have any uh, numbers down? Yeah. I was going to do another. Oh. Okay. Wait, let's see. Yep, we have Becky. Yep, I wrote down Becky's number already. I Let's see. Hey, Jeannie. Nice to... Nice to see you on. No. Becky, don't try to cheat. You put your number down twice. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like it, Becky. It's still the same number, but. <laughs> I, mean, I would be going one, two, three. She wants four, to be tired of it. All righty, guys, I'm going to do 10 more seconds. Um, and mm -hmm. if anybody has any more mm -hmm. numbers to put down, except Becky, don't try to put in a different number. I already wrote your number down. No, we got Becky. your number, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Becky. <laughs> We're just messing with you. It's all yeah, funny that's games on Fridays. Do. All right. We, I, guess, I guess that's it. I guess that's all the people we got. Debbie that says numbers. So I got Angel who picked eight. Then I have Misty who picked 27. Um, <laughs> Lonnie was already laughing because <laughs> I knew somebody hit it, but I was like, "What? Uh, yes, it's twenty-seven. I'm sorry so to tell you." Mi Misty, oh, wow. Misty, Misty picked it right away. Everybody else's number. I'm like, I knew. <laughs> Jeannie picked thirteen. Well, you were close, Jeannie. Well, <laughs> Next time, Lonnie, you have to let everybody's number. No, before you can no, it was just too funny. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> It was literally the second guess. <laughs> who, who won? Who won? Misty. Misty. Misty you won. Hi. Congratulations, Hi. Misty. You and me. Congratulations. Congratulations. 
he <laughs> private message me your address and I'll go ahead and send it yes. to you. Okay. They can private message you on YouTube. I've never That's used that this place. Psychic ability. Wow. Ooh. Well, what was it? Awesome. Last week, Aunt Debbie and I both wrote down the same exact number. Hey. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've. we've <laughs> Can I kind of tell? Well, I don't know if I can tell the what we connected with the lab the other day when we were talking, and I put the paper up. Yeah, sure. Am I go allowed ahead. to say? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so we were all um, Andy and Jackie and I were talking, <laughs> and so she's like, we we're talking about what was kind of new with her, and I took a piece of paper and I started writing, <laughs> and I had it in my hand, and then she goes. And I like in man manager and trainee, and I go like this, and it said manager. Awesome. <laughs> I am psychic, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. Had- Gasp, laugh, and cry really hard in your reading. Aww. It was Aww. it was really good. <laughs> Andy's readings are so oh, neat, you. you know. They flow and they're so wonderful. Yes. He's got a knack for writing. All these guys are really good with reading. So if you want a reading, go to their pages. <sighs> Put you your money over there. Yeah. Get them to read you. They're really good. Contact <laughs> Debbie and we'll talk, okay? Because yeah. <laughs> I still don't have a page. I just... You can I just try it. You yeah, can but I have the, the links below. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. Can I talk? No, go go ahead. It's your show. (laughs) Um, Okay, guys. If you want a reading, you can private message Psychic Fixes fan page. And um, I happen to have an offer. If you hit the offer button, you'll get an offer. Um, And Andy, I want you to put an offer in there. But Andy's got his link (laughs) to where you can also um, uh, order a reading from him. So um, anyway, I got to I got to be honest, I do have a lot. So I do have a wait list, but um, uh, we'd all love to read for you. If you want us to, we'd love that. Uh, What else do we have? Any other announcements? Well, well, I don't have my list. (laughs) Well, she's worth the wait for the reading guys. Uh, Yes. And so is Andy. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And when are you going to start yours? Hey, hey, hey. Don't give away all our secrets. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Lonnie? Yeah. Huh? What about yeah. you? Exactly. Hey, I'm just I'm I'm just the party guest. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, we love when you're with us. Uh, okay. we love it. You know, you guys, now I'm not sure who's gonna be here Wednesday for the YouTube live show. Uh please come and please like our page here and like the our to channel, our Psychic Life. And then on the first is the party. And we are going to have oh you know, wait a minute. Do we Vicky McDonald's is gonna be that next week, isn't she? On the eighth? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, the medium Vicky McDonald is practice with us. There will be no technical difficulty, <laughs> which we had last time. Um, and um, so she's ready and, and excited to come and do readings for you guys on the 8th. She blew me away when I don't get readings, you know, because I, I manifest and, and stuff. And I never ask for readings. I usually know what's going on. But she brought my brother through and um, validated it. And I just, I, it blew me away. <laughs> and it was really great because he had just died last uh, December. So I knew, wow, she's great. And I've, I've watched her do reading. So is Andy on her uh, website or her fan page on Facebook. And she's going to be with us. And we're just really excited. We're going to be doing a solid 30 minutes uh, of readings. We're going to try to get things to, you know, hello and all this stuff and do the readings. So please make it on the 8th as well as Wednesdays. And of course, the party date. We'll be giving a lot of stuff away. We'll do readings. We'll be silly. I'm sorry, we're going to be silly. But we're going to have a lot of fun. And we're just really blessed that that this guy's going to be for sale on yeah. Amazon. Yay! 
Here, Ooh, here's your class. Uh, Blondie's <laughs> name is the book. I dedicate. She's in my dedication. And um, Andy, I don't. You dedicated the book. You well, we'll tell everybody who we dedicated it to on that day, won't we? So um, yeah. you have a whole list there. You, Andy, I'll, has a big thing on. I'll, I'll dedic- be on the next book list. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Jackie. <laughs> Look at this wonderful back. We used oh, our glam you. photos, guys. We really don't <laughs> like that. Nice. I could care less. Neil went, you used that photo? And I said, I can. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's my, my book. Say book. <laughs> you took that 10 years ago. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. It's no. me. <laughs> well, yeah, 10, 20 years ago, but too bad. <laughs> all right, guys. It's, it's, all, it's time to go to the lobby. And um, please, uh, Misty, send me your address. This is ready. I'm going to put a stamp on it. And you can have your Starbucks in two to three days. It was a <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. It's, everybody be safe. Be yes. safe out there. Okay? Happy Memorial Day. Yeah, happy yeah. Memorial yeah. Day. Thank Thank you you guys. Guys. Yeah. Don't forget oh, right Wednesdays. Bye. Wednesdays. YouTube. The Psychic Live. Wednesdays. 6 30 eastern time no pacific time eastern time is my time, <laughs> my time. So, yeah you guys yeah, you'll make be, sure you tune you'll be in. here at the wrong time but <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> you'll find it sooner or later yeah i'll be there way too life. early but yeah All psychic right. life so don't forget like and subscribe our channel over there too oh thank you okay <laughs> bye guys bye Andy, take away.